morning. Good morning. I do love to tell the old, old story because it truly has made such a change, a positive change in my life. And for those of you who are already knowledgeable and know that this religion is so true, I know you love to tell the story as well. I want to talk to you today about the mid-1800s. And I know you're all thinking, oh, here we go again. She's going to tell the story of the Fox sisters. <laughs> well, yes and no. Mostly no. You know, the mid-1800s were a very, very evidential time in the history of this country. There was a great deal of seeking for spiritual truth and understanding. Spiritualists were not the only new organization that came to everyone's attention. And in fact, spiritualism had already begun across the water. We say it was the modern American spiritualism that began on March 31st, 1848. But because even in those days, people traveled to other continents and other countries, there was this knowledge of this new understanding, this new philosophy called spiritualism. You know, nowadays people come and they want a reading or they hope for a message. And very often they want to know, well, is their job secure? which is certainly a valid question in this day and age. Or they want to know if they should move or if they're going to get a new vehicle. But in the golden days of spiritualism, emphasis was put on the philosophy of personal responsibility and that wonderful joy of knowing that life continues. So there were many people that were very open to spirit influence, even if they were not speaking at a public demonstration or giving spirit greetings to others who were seeking. Ladies, do you recognize just how recently we got the right to vote? We couldn't vote once upon a time. Why? Because we were ladies. Well, if you do some research and you find out what women did and what they endured because they had the audacity to protest and lobby and make a fuss instead of staying at home like they were supposed to, we have the opportunity to vote. And I certainly hope every woman here does if nothing else, for those women who worked so hard to give us that option. It was no mistake that women came together in those days and said, this is not right. Women need to be able to participate in the decision-making process. It is our husbands, our children, our way of life that can be manipulated, that can be changed. We have that right. How many of you are aware that many of the women pioneers who fought for women's rights spoke on the platform in Lilydale, New York. And they walked in the streets in the communities near Lilydale, New York, with their banners and their signs saying that women should be able to vote. The spiritualist community in and around Lilydale, New York, said, You're absolutely right. We are all children of God, and we all deserve the right to vote. And they invited 
invited these women who were way before their time to come in and sit in the auditorium in Lilydale. And the place was packed. Now, did some woman somewhere say, hmm, this doesn't seem fair, I think I'm going to start a big fuss? I don't think it was just that. I think it was spirit at work. Spirit knew people were not being treated equal. And spirit inspired those people who would have the courage to step up and be unpopular but do the right thing. Shifting to another event that was going on around the same time. Do you know that our U.S. Constitution forbade the practice of purchasing slaves from Africa and other countries? That very same Constitution condoned owning slaves. Now, does that seem right to you? Does that seem right to you that someone could come into your, your, tone, your, your town, your own home, 